Broadcasting live from the treehouse in Phoenix, Arizona. It's Beer Googles. Double E. Double O. Double G. With Chris Woodsy Peralta and Mark Pohl. From the home office in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix? It's fine, bro. Can we, let's make a correction I now. I fucking hate no, you. No, we're good. We fine, nailed it. go. It's Gilbert, my friend. Yeah. Home, you, you know you know where your home oh, offices I don't are. I even know where. No, that was perfect. That was okay. great. I loved it. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Hola. Oh, no, no, no. You go back to you. You're good. Uh, buenvenidos. Hey, we have a new friend. Douglas de cervezas. New friend. Oh, now you switch. Oh, uh, fuck. Sorry, Bro, go. come on, man. Hola, check mark. Ra. Uh, Ra. Is that his name? Is Ra? No, we or need it's... something that starts with a T. Because it's Timothy? I like Timothy. I like Patimothy the pterodactyl. Patimothy. Patimothy. Uh, I app- I approve this Thank, message. Thank you, Patimothy. Patimothy. So today, yes, we're, are we hitting? Are we hitting the ground running? We're hitting the ground. Are are we? Are we running? Are we hitting the ground running with the devil? Running with the devil. I don't even like running, dude. I like sitting. That's why we're. That's why we're so good at podcasting. Yeah, because it's a sitting man. Because we don't have to run. <laughs> And a sitting woman sport. Yes. So it's a sitting person. And it's no weight classes. It's very nice. <sighs> Correct. Yeah, we can all... It's weight neutral. Weight, gender. It, all, it is the most equal sport. Podcasting is the most equal sport. Of all. Yeah. Meritocracy Unlike is great. Unlike breakdancing, which is now an Olympic sport. Amen to that. Hallelujah. I'm shocked it didn't happen after Run DMC was raising hell in the Praise class be. when this lunch bell rings. Yeah. <laughs> or after the Beastie Boys. We're getting no sleep till Brooklyn. Whose house? Oh, we, Run's house. Run's house. And we've got P- P- Timothy the Pterodactyl. Thank you for that gift. Uh, thanks to the P- Timothy Pterodactyl Patorn sex. Um, and we have uh, Diet Pepsi, which I purchased and had no idea. It's been sitting downstairs in a box, ready to be put in a refrigerator. Yeah. Fr- in a refrigerator for you. Yeah. Not even for you. I was going to put it in there for myself. Yeah. So I did it, right? And then what happened? You go, I love Diet Pepsi. It's my most favoriteist. Yeah. So what are we doing today, buddy? Uh, today, this is actually, <clears throat> Mimi, I have a correction, sir. This is actually from the home office in Columbus, Georgia. Oh, I was going to say Duluth. No, negative. But it's Columbus. This is the southern office of Dunder Mifflin. They also sell paper down south. Is this GB one of the this numbers? This is GB number two, sir. Okay, now- You've clearly stated that they you flip flop them around. They have been flop flipped several times, multiple car pileups. Are we now locked into one, no. two, and three now? <laughs> the last Perfect. time we had a, a, a <laughs> beer googles that was GB one, and this is now GB two, and it's the same guy. No, That's what's funny. About they are time. different guys. That's why I said GB two. I know, but so, I'm saying GB1 is now GB1 going forward. The same person yes. is my question. That's what yes. I meant. I, I, will, I will allow that. This is now GB2, Georgia boy number two. The question was posed. Can we uh, say a first name or uh, shout out? Shouts out? I don't know if I'm allowed. Let's not dox him. No, we're good. So GB2. Yes. Uh, the question was posed. Singers versus bands. And musicians? How about musicians, musicians in general? Yes, absolutely. Musicians and singers versus the bands that they were in if those singers or musicians left a band. How their solo careers were compared Correct. to the band's success. Correct. How the band fared after the solo per- after that person left as or well. Or before. Or joined, right? Yes. Same thing. Okay. So how did a solo artist do versus the band with that singer, bass player, drummer, whatever versus uh on on their own and then i thought in addition to that what would have happened if some famous bands a lead singer left and how would that band have been different we get to play speculation yeah i was like well, shit, favorites. what happened if some huge band in 1993 i don't know who was huge then uh the lead singer left or the main lyricist because a lot of times Oh, Eddie yeah. Vedder leaving Pearl Jam. Yeah, there 91 you go. would have been. There like, you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 91 would have been 10. And that album yeah, yeah, yeah. had huge right. fanfare. That's, that's and then a, see, two very years good later, point. Vitalogy comes out. But a lot of times, um, you know, everyone's like, oh, the singer this, the singer that. Well, sometimes the singer is just a singer. The singer isn't necessarily the writer of the songs and not the creator of the music. So just because the singer leaves doesn't mean that the band's going to turn to shit. And a lot of people don't really realize that. In a lot of ways, it's like sports, too. Like you've got. 
all these, especially when it comes to a band, they're all integral parts to that, to the whole. Some add this weird value. Like they're the missing piece that makes the whole thing amazingly better. Yeah. And sometimes an addition is actually a detraction because it comes along with other stresses or other kind of issues, right? An addition is a distraction. Sometimes. Yeah. And a subtraction. Boom. Boom. All right. Well, I'm ready to go whenever you are. I know this one's going to be, this one's going to be fun because I took copious notes. I got some Megzi's answers. I know we didn't do poll, right? On this one? No, because I got enough. Right. And yeah, so we, I sat here after, after that, uh, and just started jotting. So during the conversation with uh, GB2, when the question was posed to me a few days ago, he brought up right away Lionel Richie being in the Commodores. I was like, oh, yeah. I, I Yeah. What that's a, a great one. That's a great point. Brick Cause, House was cause, with Commodores. Hello. Is it me you're looking for? I'm a terrible singer. Oh, no. Yeah. And all that shit. Oh, you can go back to you, man. Oh, yeah. So, so GB2. <laughs> and that's a great. That is a great answer. Yeah. Lionel Richie and the Commodores. Because the Commodores kind of were stay the same, but they then they started doing casinos and like little small menus. And Lionel Richie blew up like Well, do you think that's because the of the dawn of MTV? Possibly. I mean, but, when did he leave the Commodores? We're not gonna be or Google it. But no. I mean he got with, with It was early eighties or late seventies, right? I, in my so, opinion, I, I would think because dance the thing was like eighty three, eighty four. Dance, dan- not dance dance on the ceiling. Not, dancing yes. on the ceiling. Yeah. Right. And that was I mean, MTV is 83, so yep. I i mean, I knew him as a solo artist because of my age. I didn't, right. I, I learned later that he was in an, a band. Right, or, but you didn't see any music videos of the Commodores. Correct. Movie. So that's the point is his <gasps> him leaving may have really pigeon or hamstr- what, hamstrung, hamstrung them. Hamstrung them, some cut their, cut their Achilles tendon from the lo- well, under but, the bed. But see, that raises the point that if he stayed with them and then they marketed themselves on MTV... Would they have been bigger than they were? Would they have been bigger than Lionel Richie on his own? Also, right? If, if they had stayed together, yeah, yeah. These are great points. You know it's what I'm like, saying? Oh, that's that is so, one of the best starting ones. And I didn't even out. think about the MTV f- thing factor until we sat down just right now. Like, well, I don't oh, consider yeah, MTV. <laughs> I don't consider as much of a factor other than how we perceive the the artist. Well, but right? didn't because if the Commodores stay together and said, well, F you, Lionel, we'll do our own music and get on MTV, which they didn't do. Or they didn't do it very well. Or they didn't do it very well, right? So they could have strategically, they just could have not done executed well. Yeah. So it does hurt them even in that way. So the MTV factor isn't really, it even speaks more to the solo star that Lionel Richie, that Lionel Richie became. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I don't even know any of their music, you know, after you, he you left, just sang all of it. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I know all there. of it. Duh. Hello, goodbye. I am leaving you guys to die. <laughs> what does he? What does he say in the video? Lionel, come down to the art studio. I don't remember the blonde girl, uh, the etchings. blind girl, and she's making the clay thing with his amazing hair. Oh yeah. Do, do, do. Uh, uh, <laughs> my eye. And in my mind, I've kissed your lips. Knock it off. Times. Okay, that's enough. Uh, you need the hammer. You need the uh, <laughs> hammer. All right, so Lionel Rich is a great truth. One. Now, did he propose, because this, because GB1 did it, How did he have other thoughts? I'd love to, if he has some, I'd love to do his. Verse. He did. Okay. But it's, it's a big one. Dude, I'm, I'm not sure. Is it a load blower? It is. Is it a, okay. Do you want... Well, does he only have one other one? Yes. Okay, so let's let's save it till we're all we all probably pulled it or all four of us probably talk put, well, put that one down. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. So I doubt Megzi did. She's well, too no, Meg, Megzi Megzi has. You might be surprised. Okay. She did go a little newer, but she's got some pretty well, older ones that she really brought up that okay. were really smart. Then so I'll save his other let's start, one. Yeah, let's save that other one okay. till later because we'll do Megsy's and his towards the end. Sure. Because we want to give them, want to build up, build up, and then poof. Okay, what are we, what are we talking about You and again? I are pumping three times and they're going to... Ch- okay, this is not good. No, okay. Let's talk about music, bro. Yeah, music, your hey, turn, go. Hey, hey, stay on target. I'm. Oh, I was on the target. No, you fucking <laughs> sicko. Okay, your turn, man. You uh, go. Go. On you, on you. Oh shit! Sorry, bro. Um, 
I have a list. Uh, Diana Ross. Okay. She, Let's talk about it. Supremes. Yeah. So. Mary Wilson would have been 1A in that, right? Because we, like, she was the second per, like, it was her, Diana Ross, Mary Wells, and then that third Supreme that I don't remember. Supreme but, three. Yes. Uh, Georgia girl three. <laughs> Georgia woman, Georgia S3. woman three, S three, S three, yeah. yeah. So go uh, back to you. Play. Tell us uh, about Diana. I mean, obviously she was huge. You know, she had t t t tons of hits. You can, was it Ring My Bell? Was that her? No. no. Uh, shit, I don't know Crap. who sang that. Don't listen. I know to me. the I song know though. Stuff. But do you not think that she was bigger with the Supremes? I don't Stop know. Stop in the name of love is is the one I always get yeah, whenever I hear a song. Yeah, that's huge, right? Well, Ain't No Mountain High Enough with Marvin Gaye was yeah. ridiculous, right? So that was a solo career. That was definitely not with the Supremes. I don't, I don't, to your question, I don't know. Because of the 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 time that I grew up, I don't know. The Supremes was before my time, so I can't really say which which one was bigger. I, I don't really know. I can tell you that the Supremes were not the same without her. Of course. I don't know. That's, how, she's Diana yeah. Ross. Pretty odd because it was Diana Ross and the Supremes. Yeah, it really wasn't even. It's crazy because when you hear bands, right? It's like you mentioned one earlier. I did Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. Technically, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I know the E Street Band's its own kind of entity, but yeah. really, it's Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, right? Yeah, I mean, he he's he's Bruce Springsteen for Christ's sake. For can they could, for Christ's could, sake? Would the E Street Band get pissed and kick him out? We're tired of your <laughs> shit. You're no longer the boss of us. Get, get out, out, Bruce. Go back to Jersey <laughs> from whence you came. Get back to that stone pony dickwad. <laughs> An awesome music venue. You know who way. hates Bruce Springsteen? Me. Our super senior executive producer, Mary. I'm not a Springsteen fan well, there either. There you go. And I'm from Philly. I should be like I told you the U2 story, didn't I? YouTube? U2. U2. The concert? <gasps> Never? No, I guess not. Have I never? Oh, get, get out the Stick of Fury, button, sir. Bro. No, it's Stick of Fury time. Okay, hang on. I want to I want to see you initiate. Is it still this one? I think it's still this one, right? No. No, it's this one. <laughs> Go. You two, arguably best nail album, Joshua Tree. Joshua Tree tour. 1987 or 1989 i think it was 80 i think it's 87 yeah because yeah um one of the best albums it would have been it should have been on my on my island i don't even know if i brought it up but no playing uh jfk stadium in philly that's where the army navy game used to be historically held before they tore it down rfk jfk it rfk was in, in dc where the washington football team plays uh played yes this is jfk stadium it was it was philadelphia's Sat up to like a hundred thousand people. Had the Army Navy game every year up until they tore it down. So the basically. Eagles played there. The Eagles did play there till they moved to the Vet. Okay, but even then, there were they both existed at one point, and the Army Navy game was still held at the JFK Stadium. Okay, because the Vet came out in the seventies. This is eighty seven. We're still playing concerts. I think eighty nine would have been the last JFK concert. Okay, Monsters of Rock or something. Yeah, I think that's what it was. To be honest, so it was you two. So they're uh, they're playing and. During, in the middle of the show, like, who wants to play my guitar? Some guy's like, oh, this. so they brought a guy up from the freaking, like, crowd. Right. And he just did, like, dude, he just played three string, like, you know, one, five, four, whatever the chord progression was. And the kid could play it, and he played it, right? So then it's later at the end of the show. End of the night, hey, who else wants to play my guitar? Bruce fucking Springsteen comes out. And it's on, you can see it on everywhere. Like, there's some YouTube stuff about it, and there's, like, on the set list. He comes out, and he does two songs. He does the one, and then he does, like, Born in the USA. Wow. And I was like, this is 87? Like, this dude just, he's just hanging out watching you two. I mean, it, it's just one of the coolest stories. Like, I saw Bruce Springsteen, and I didn't go to see Bruce Springsteen. How fucking cool yeah, is that? Yeah, right? But so, you hate him. I'm not the hugest fan, but I do love, like, <laughs> Glory Days. Like, Glory yeah, Days is one of my favorite. Yeah. But, but anyway. We went total tangent because he didn't even leave, but allegedly the Street Band kicked him out. So, well, in my world they did because I think it's funny. It's hilarious. So once again, Diana Ross, Supreme. Oh yeah, story time. <sighs> <laughs> Bruce Springsteen doing an encore, fucking hell yeah, doing an encore with you two in '87 in fast. Philly, and I was once again like, I've been. I don't know how the fuck I got. I saw the things I saw in my life. I've had, not that it's over by any means, I hope. What? 
But it's been an aw- it's been a really fucking fun it's ride. It's been a good when I look ride. Back huh? on it, yeah. But back to you, sir. Back to you, Chuck. Uh, I don't have anything more on uh, Diana Ross, Chuck. Okay. Well, then keep going. Well, who, who's your next right. one? Um, how about you do two? I'll do one, then you do two, because you probably have eight thousand of them. I don't have. I have more that didn't leave than did mm. on my list. Oh, I've got more that left them. Okay, so <laughs> the Beatles. John was had a all of them had solo careers. Yes, and we've mentioned that. Paul has been inducted into the Rock and Hall of Fame as a Beatle, as a wing, and as a solo artist. Yes. And what well, we had the other one we'll talk about. So the other artists we'll You know, obviously the Beatles broke up, so they didn't leave. Right. Um, and all of them, Ringo, they all had solo careers. They all had solo albums. They all did, you know, let it be and you know, these amazing careers as solo artists. Can, can you compare any of those to what the Beatles did? I mean, the, the Beatles were groundbreaking in the 60s. They created pop rock, if you want to, whatever word you want to use, you know, in 64, et cetera. Yeah. So I don't know the question. No, the question is very valid. <laughs> There's a small distinction here. Sure. Did the Beatles break up because they broke up or did or because the egos got too big and they needed to be a branch on on their own. Like they just couldn't stand each other anymore. Like well, almost what's the reasoning for that? Did they all have a little bit of an ego and wanted to well, do their of own course, thing? Yeah. Or was it just like time, right? Like, is it just, it ran a course. It's course. It seemed like there was always friction because they were, there was greatness. Yeah. And the oh, price yeah. of greatness tends to be head bashing right? or head, head clashing. Right. So let me ask you this. How would you rank the success of the four Beatles uh, after post? Paul, John. George and Ringo. But in that order? Well uh, It's hey, it's it's subjective, man. So tell uh, tell me your feelings shit. on it. No, um, those are that's a good thought. That's a good order. Tell me tell me what your thoughts are on it. As you lick your ass. I don't know, man. I I mean I was never the biggest Beatles fan, so I never, I mean, I never owned a tape or an eight track or a record or any of their music. I appreciate them for their creativity and for how they shaped the world musically and otherwise. Invented bubblegum pop. Yeah, sure. there you go. Short bubble lyrics, pop. short songs, so repetitive, easy to sing, easy to sing along with. Absolutely. And, but they, they were that. one of the first world phenomenons yeah. along with Elvis, you know? Yeah. So the fucking people went, the ladies went crazy crying and shit have you listened to a live concert you can't all hear you them. hear is ah. the screaming yeah it's horrible it's imagine going and spending money no, to see the no, beat like no. i was there yeah all i heard was fucking screaming uh, uh i mean i remembered the uh, george harrison's some some solo stuff and um his greatest hit yeah his most popular what would you say do you know the I can see the video in my head where he's I sitting in front. My there you go. On. Do you know that's a cover? It is. It's Roy Orbison. 19, 1934. No, a it's a cut. I got my mind set on you is an old timey 1934. Old timey. Old timey. Well, he did join the Traveling Wilburys. That's a different conversation, oh, right? It was. It yes. was Harrison, Jeff Lynn, right. Roy Orbison, Bob Dylan, and Tom Petty. Oh, as the traveling God Wilburys. Well, musically he and lyrically he's yeah, phenomenal. Just don't he talk. never sang along. He never sang Thank the traveling Wilburys songs. I don't think. But they're they had some good stuff. Yeah. But to your point, anyway, um, the Beatles, to my in my opinion, I would go Paul because of just obviously content. He's had the mo- then Ringo commercially because he was oddly popular. Yeah. I. Uh, oddly, oddly popular because he wasn't a good singer, in my opinion. I felt no. in the time that I was born, uh, he was the drummer, uh, right? Garden. Yeah, and he was a great drummer. He was yeah. really like Stuart Copeland, the police loved, right? Like they a lot of people tell because he has these weird timings. And the Beatles were revolutionary in their own group, like they were geniuses individually, right? And yeah, Harrison brought this and about that. And then I, I put John third because he, he had one song. I mean, it was Imagine, right? It wasn't Imagine yes. as a solo, yes, probably the most revered post Beatles song. Yeah. Even of all of them. I would agree. Probably. I mean, and then, and then Harrison would be my fourth popular wise, like after coming out, coming out. I can't, I can't argue with that, but Hey, it's subjective, man. Right. So the Beatles, that's, that's an awesome one. What do you, what do you um, I like that. 
What are your other thoughts I mean, on that? Once again, they didn't, you know, they didn't really leave. One of them didn't leave, right, to go solo. You know, Ringo didn't go, oh, fuck you guys. I'm going to go do my own thing. Yeah, they broke up. But they, you know, yeah, they broke up and then. But who who knows what led to that? Right. And, and I definitely, I see your point regarding that. And I would think that it was like, it was in the 70s, right, when they broke up. So yeah. they'd been together for a long time and um, that's okay and how many the, years how many years are they together that's another funny tidbit I, tell me give me a number um 11 10 oh, only, i was way off you, that was an awesome guess but <laughs> you do not think the beatles were only together take a step back you do not think they've only contributed 10 years right because they're right. so influential even now 50 years later yeah that, right, yeah, yeah that 10 years you're like you don't even think about that right yeah anyway but please uh, I, I think that they, like you mentioned, egos and money. I think that had a lot to do with it. I, I think mean, even egos more than money because I think they had the money. I don't think they were lacking well, money or fame. Right, or any of but that. but they wanted to create their own thing. I think uh, absolutely. I, I think that had a lot to do with it as well. Yeah. Nice. I love. That's a great. Yeah. I did not put the Beatles down, but that was an awesome one. And I'm just gonna have to blame Yoko. It's all her fault. Definitely for sure. I mean, what? No. No, it's her fault. <laughs> um. I'm not going to make that joke on this podcast, but I'll tell That's you. That's why I'll I did it. After. Okay, you're no, up. No, no, no. I've got actually a better joke about that. Uh, but I won't Teddy Brosef, you're up. Okay. I'm giving you a two for, that's why I sold, asked you to do two. Okay. I'm going to do one band, but two people left. Oh my God. I don't even know what we're talking about. Genesis. Nice. That's Peter good, Peter Gabriel. Yeah, that's good. Peter Gabriel with Genesis, in my, I didn't even know Genesis existed when Peter Gabriel was the lead singer. Nor I don't, did I. I don't know any of their music. I only know it after. I know from early 80s, probably because, I'm in, to your point, MTV was probably very influential with Land of Confusion. Yeah. And It's No Fun Being a Legal Alien. And, you know, all the Genesis took off, right, with when Collins took over. But Peter Gabriel's solo career yeah. absolutely probably outshined even Genesis and Phil Collins combined all together with just that album. So yeah. just that album alone well, was worth him leaving Genesis. What, what's on that album? In your eyes, red rain, don't give up. Uh, it, it's it's just it's just myriad. It's just hit after hit. Not even hit after it. Just solid song after solid. What year song. was that? 85, 86, 84, 85. So sledgehammer was before that. Say anything. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. sledgehammer was after. Because sledgehammer 90, was bigger. It, no, sledgehammer was eighties, uh, dude. No, it was eighty nine ninety. Sledgehammer was actually, bigger. No, that sledgehammer was, uh, was more. MTV mainstream in your radio eyes was, popular. In my opinion, In Your Eyes was the most, and I'll tell you no why, way. because Proms used it on well, yeah. as their theme song. I'm I think it's say anything. You never saw Sledgehammer in in and no. out with a guy holding up a yeah, boombox in a did. movie. One in South Park they did that. South Park's not say anything, <laughs> sir. Nor nor <laughs> <laughs> No, sorry, South Park. It was uh, yeah, exactly. It Shut was the, the fuck monkey up, song. It was the monkey. What's yeah. the monkey Shock one? The monkey. Shock the monkey. That was yeah. A great how song. do I win her back, <laughs> Kyle? How do I win her back? You wear, put on trench coat, and put on Peter Gabriel on, in a in a ghetto blaster. And he played Shock the and monkey. And he played Shock the monkey. Oh, that's fucking beautiful. Yeah, it was funny as shit. Oh my god, that's amazing. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Red Rain, Sledgehammer. Don't give up. Okay. That hear that voice again. And then there's Mercy Street, big time. Yeah, We're that's I knew that one. And that's what's claiming. That was definitely MTV because he was a very yes. visual, big time. He was and a very visual video guy, yeah. right? And in your eyes wasn't a big video. No, but it was Sledgehammer with the claymation, correct? And big time where it was weird. Also, Hi there. Remember that whole yes, thing? Yes. Yes. In your eyes. This is the picture. We do what we're told. Those are the. See, I thought Sledgehammer was his own album. I guess so. That shows what I know. Uh, you know what? It probably was. No, I'm, you just I'm read full it off. Of shit. I, it's off the internet. The bro. beer Google's it's off bro. The beer, like the beer Google's never lies. We never lie, dude. Oh, that's true. We don't lie, dude. So, um, second but one on did, that. Um, oh, go ahead. Is in your eyes only popular because of say anything? No. What in, in your eyes is arguably the no, best but, love song of all time. No, Argu arguably. No way, dude. Not even close. Give the me, best love song of all time, dude. Is obviously. I want you to want me. No. Oh damn. Is "Love of a Lifetime" by Firehouse. <laughs> <laughs> I have that on CD, <laughs> sir. 
Finally found oh. love oh, with a That's some horrible ass shit right there, man. Time. That's like an 80s hair band I pooped more, all over the place. More than words. Extreme is not bad either. No, they're equally poopy. <laughs> There's poop everywhere. Right. So, but but I would argue that <laughs> I would argue Gabriel just leaving that. So, the second one. So, I can say so to this without actually saying so, 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 Cause so. Because it's the album, name of the album. The name of the album was so. It, arguably was it one, so of the good? Be- one of the best. One of the best. So good. <laughs> I got. I got. I, I got. Um, second one would then be Phil Collins leaving Genesis. Or how Genesis did without Gabriel actually had its own success. All, very parallel or equal to to Gabriel in the early 80s with videos like Land of Confusion. Like, some, Land of Confusion was with Phil Collins, though. No, that was Genesis, my friend. No, 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 I know, but Phil Collins was in Genesis. Yes, I'm saying he they had the equal success to- Okay, I thought you meant to, without Phil Collins. To, no, to Peter Gabriel's solo career. Okay. What I'm saying, Genesis then also did really well, and then they law, and then Collins went and did his own thing. Yes. And then they kind of disappeared, right? Mike Rutherford went to Mike and the Mechanics. Yeah. Did that song with about in the living years. Do, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. You, know, you listen to these. I, I know that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but those are the two. That was one of the biggest bands that came to me because they actually lost really two front men who built both, you know, built that band. And now it's your turn, I think. I'm thinking. Tell, tell me more. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I knew about the Genesis or Phil Collins or Peter Gabriel until I saw Atlantic Confusion on MTV. I would agree. I, I don't think was Atlantic Confusion. I think it was "It's No Fun Being an Illegal Alien" was the one I remember. It's a little I older. I don't. I don't. I remember that song because you brought it up a month ago or something, and I was like, "Oh yeah, now I remember it." But the land of the confusion, land of confusion video is so memorable. It was because the the puppets and, and you know and the Reagan, Reagan thing, and yeah. the button and all that shit. That was beautiful. But it, the song is so catchy and. It's it has a groove to it that I really liked, you know. So, and it spoke to me as a young person, you know, in the, in the growing up in that political climate of the Cold War and USSR and all that shit. So it definitely had a had much more of a deeper effects in just musical appreciation, right? Of course, it got it had it had a philosophy behind it. Yes, um, strongest album I would argue from Genesis. Yeah. There is Genesis, which is like the little perfection pieces that are up in the air. Like it's like a background with like gold pieces. Anyway, the one I thought was Invisible Touch, In Too Deep. Right. I, uh, so you have in- Invisible Touch, Tonight, 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 Land of Confusion, In Too Deep. Yeah, that, that's Domino, their, Throwing It All Away. That's their big album. And I didn't know Throwing It All Away wasn't Collins. I would have thought, Throwing It All Away. I thought that would have been... Not Genesis. And Take Me Home, that's Phil Collins. Take Me Home is Phil Collins. I think that's his first. That's after he left. And was on, yep. And it was on, oh, you can keep it. um, It was on uh, Miami Vice. Remember, he was in a Miami Vice episode. Yes. Or two, and they played Take Me Home. Yes. Yeah, and then Maroon 5 stole it for their new song. They did? Girls like you and then guys like me. It's the same thing. Take, take me home. Oh, I thought you meant they they did a cover. No, they Not they stole it. No, they stole it. That's a cover at least be an homage. They just took the fucking feel of that song. I misunderstood what you said. I get really personal when it comes to content. Wow, fucking shit. So Genesis, uh, Gabriel, then Collins. Yeah. How about you, sir? That's good, dude. Thanks, man. Um, I don't want to- Oh, and and back to you. Back to you, Frank. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but Michael Jackson. Okay. Obviously, the, he's pro, you know he's the greatest artist of all time and the most still the highest selling artist of all time in the Jackson Five. So to leave the Jackson Five and then become a mega super global superstar, you know, very influential. Yeah, and, Meg, that was know, Meg's album choice. after album after album. So no, it's a good one. Um, ABC. I want you back. I'll be there. Those are three huge Jackson Five songs. Hard to eclipse those, but then you have Beat It and Thriller well, and Pyt. I mean, yeah, his yeah, solo career was the ridiculous. Thriller album alone. Yeah, I mean, just eclipses everything yeah. that they did. Yeah. Absolutely. So, to your, absolutely, and that was Megzi. Thank you to you, sir, and to Megzi for for the Michael Jackson. But give, also, give me another one. Yeah, MTV. Yes. He, oh yeah. MTV. I mean, he still would have been a star musically, but MTV. 
I mean, Thriller was a damn seventeen minute video or some stupid Thriller shit was like that. Done by fucking the guy who did Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the director Landis. Yes, correct. That's the whole reason the Thriller fucking dance scene is in the parade part of oh, Ferris Bueller's yeah, Day Off. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of an homage to that. Is Robert Robert Landis right? I think is. The I believe director. that's correct. He he directed fucking. They spent was it fifty million or five million? Some I mean, we're talking in eighties money. So yeah, like, it was a lot. It, they they. They got some prepaid thing to pay right. to fund that. It's like we talked about that. Yeah. yeah, we talked about it. So, but Megzi chose that one as well. And to your point, you're right. He was awesome. MTV was amazing for that. And then I remember still we talked about before the Scream video when BET paid like a whatever I think it was a hundred million, some ridiculous amount of money, so they could premiere the Scream video with oh. Janet Jackson. And MTV did not have the exclusive rights to that. BET I think won that. It was a pretty interesting thing that happened there. Huh, so I didn't anyway, know that. Yeah. So um give me another yeah, that's a great one. How about a how about another one? Well poop. Obviously Van Halen. Okay, let's do that. Let's blow may, that one. May load. Eddie rest in peace. Yeah. I, I think it's incredibly Alanis Morissettean that David Lee Roth left Van Halen after nineteen eighty four and went on to a less than mediocre solo career with hits like just the gigolo and California girls. I did like just like paradise, the nine Oh two and Oh cover. Um, I did like that song a lot. Right. Still do. It's, I think it's crazy that he left the band almost at its peak at that point after jump, et cetera, to, to go solo. And then Van Halen goes out and gets Sammy Hagar who has an incredible solo career with I Can't Drive 55, Where Eagles Fly, these great hits, who also had a good career in the band Montrose. And then they increased their stardom with MTV with, you know, the OU812 album with When It's Love and a bunch of other hits. So it's very, I think it's incredibly ironic that David Lee Roth falls on his face and then they get a singer that's, already more popular than dave ever would be yeah yeah sammy going in was more popular than david at his peak after he left yeah for sure yeah and certainly sammy even now oh yeah yeah when he goes to cabo wabo because right and, and we kind of talked about that the like the fil and they had three out they had three singers Yes. They had the guy from Extreme Gary also. Sharon. I don't know why I brought that up that Gary early. Gary Stupid Sharon. Uh, uh, yeah, I precogged her. Sorry. You. But I, it was going to it was gonna come up, though. I didn't think <laughs> no, Extreme was going to come that's up. That's dumb. But no, yeah, he did three. He did like two songs, I think, or something. They, on, they did the an album. Hits album. Yeah, but I think he only did four songs on no, it. No, they did an album. They did a whole thing? I, I think so. It was the greatest hits. It was hits called with, like, Van Halen 3 was what? the name of the album. Sure. Van Halen Gary Sucks. <laughs> more than words. He sucks more than words. Oh, anyway. Uh, go uh, yeah. So to that point, um, David Lee Roth leaves. He does just cover songs, as far as I know, just Jiggle. Well, and, no, he had uh, a couple. Yeah, I know, but Yankee Rose was good. Um, okay, because and you got to. What's funny is that David Lee Roth's solo band was amazing. He had Steve Vai, quite possibly in the top ten guitar players to ever live. The guy is a fucking stud. And um, Billy, Billy, what's his name, on bass, who went on to, he started Mr. Big and a couple other bands. Amazing bass player. And I forget who the drummer is. I can't remember his name. But Dave's solo band was really good. But yet the songs were poop. So that just goes to show that the songwriting was really important and he didn't have that. Maybe they didn't either. Great musicians aren't always great writers. Absolutely right. I mean, to the argument we we talked about it just a minute ago before record, hitting record, um, Bob Dylan. Oh, yeah. Great songwriter. I love most covers of his songs. John Lennon also, many covers of his songs I love do not like the originals as much or, or just, they're just, it's got his voice. Yeah, I don't. Well, I can't I stand Bob that. Dylan's voice at all. I don't yeah. understand who gave him a record contract. Gr a, amazing songwriter. He was a poet. Like man. he's a lyricist of it was it's a time. beautiful, right? Uh, and he guitar player, right? But dude, don't no. Please stop singing, dude. Please stop. <laughs> Shush. Times are a changing, bro. 
That's a beautiful one. Um, anything else about Van Halen with Sammy, without, um, and bringing bringing David Lee Roth back? Well, it was almost too little, too late. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Well, or, or I, I don't want to get that? into the well. Do you like Dave or do you like Sammy better? Because there's no that's a that's a that is an apples orange. That's a lose lose conversation because it's all subjective as to when you were born and when you were raised, when you were exposed to them, and it's personal preference. You know, like well, can you really compare? running with the devil with dreams they're i mean musically they're so different and it was a different time you're talking the 70s versus the 80s and it's the, the musically it's vastly different so they're almost like two different bands i would agree and and also in the maturity like, oh yeah 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 you're talking about sammy adopting van halen or van halen vice adopting versa yeah sammy when they're probably at their most polished. I mean, they've been there, they've been doing it for now 20 or 10 or 15 years or whatever. They're polished, they've gotten better, their songwriting's improved. So they're riding this high wave because all the work that they've put in yeah, up to that point. Right. And David Lee Roth was during the growing pains parts, right? Like when, Yeah, well, I, see, I, mean, I see what you're saying. They still rocked out. I mean, right. running with the devil. But they were on, way more down raw. And, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, they're more raw and they were just a little more polished. It actually allowed them to be, have a little more commercial success as well. Yeah, again, because Sammy was dude. Yeah, and Sammy was not a commercial guy. He became just popular like a party guy, like with everybody. Yeah. But, it, but initially, he wasn't like a commercial draw. Like, correct. He was just good. He was just a rocker. Well, Dave had way. M uh, charisma. I believe he had more stage presence. Yes, stage presence. But and I charisma. believe Sammy had a better voice. Yeah. And he's a better musician. And he had more energy. But that's, again, that's opinion. my subjective opinion. Right. So. And and energy. He had uh, he had more energy, and he was more. He felt like more of a man of the people, not. Above, the, like above, yes, the people, in a weird way. I, I would agree. I, it, look, I don't know David Lee Roth personally, so I can't speak that he was an elitist. I, I saw an interview with David Lee Roth just three weeks ago, and it was about it, how he spent two years in Tokyo learning this ancient art of drawing and coloring and shading, and it was very interesting. But his ego is still the size of its own country, and he's still a butthole, and. <laughs> but not a butthole surfer, right? Definitely not a butthole surfer. I uh, I appreciate his contribution to the music world very much. Yeah. I ag agreed 100%. Do we have any uh, closing arguments? <laughs> but, uh, counselor. No. <laughs> was that a burp? No. Or was that something? <sighs> the pater pat that was the, the pterodactyl went flying by and it was like, wow. No. That's what Patimothy sounds like. Timothy. Timothy the pterodactyl. Is there like a... Oh, Sounds like Dr. Is Eve. there a P uh -huh. apostrophe Timothy? No, sir. Oh, it's just like, just like pterodactyl spelled, sir. Patimothy. Patimothy. Okay. It's like the Philadelphia. It's silent. The Pafillies. All right, man. <laughs> I'm going to throw a weird one at you. Like a curveball? Yeah, it's weird because it's like... The ours tend to be 80 centric because of where we're because of our filter. I have a 90s one. Oh, here, I have I have 90s and maybe even a 2000 one. Oh, but that's not the, the front door. but that's not the point. So shut the front door. The point is this: we're heavies 80s because that's what we grew up with. Yeah. Uh, Chicago and my Peter, kind of town. Peter Cetera. Uh, he left. Yeah, he I did it all for the glory of love, bro. Oh shit, he did do that shitty song, right. dude. That has got to be the. Most amazing love song of all time. Weddings, proms. I've not seen a prom. Funerals. Don't even start your. I didn't see John motherfucking Kuzak holding his boombox over his head going, We did it all for the, the glory of love. love. Didn't he do any Karate Kid shit? Wasn't that yes, the Karate, Karate Kid? Yes, Karate Kid 97. Yes. Um, the return of Yagasan. And then I, he, he had a very, very lucrative solo career with like Amy Grant. He did a lot of collaborations with people oh, and he did. Okay. But Chicago actually had a couple singers prior to that. I'm just saying his solo was arguably pretty popular and Chicago's still around, but they're yeah. like a 30 piece fucking man. It's like a football team. Like, <laughs> yeah, Peter Cetera might be the quarterback or something, right? And that's awesome. But you still need offense, defense, and special teams, bro. Yeah, you but still need would you say guys. that Chicago with him? was the best version of Chicago? One of the better ones. They were really popular in the 70s, like Saturday or 624, you know, Saturday in the park. Something about the 25 4th of or 624, yeah. Those were right prior, but he did a lot of the, you're the meaning in my life, you're the inspiration. Oh, Don't look back, Mita. right? I think Chicago 19 was one, because they numbered their albums, like Chicago 1, 2, 3. 
They okay. just did it that way. It made it easier than having titles for them. So they're, they're up to Chicago or whatever, 20-something, 86, you know, 92. 69. 69. <laughs> but uh, Peter Cetera, <laughs> now it's your turn. So That's a good one, dude. Eh, it's It was a little one. It just came up in the 80s, so it popped in my head. All right. Well, you know, I can't, uh, I can't not bring up metal, bro. Dude, you sh- look at him. Sh- look at him shaking his fucking head. You want me to not bring up metal? My favorite thing yeah. is when I say something yeah. in our podcast yeah. and you go, that's a great Slayer song. <laughs> are you and being, like, are you being facetious? I'm, or we, is it, do you really like we're it? We're having jovial banter. Jovial I, banter. I will honestly tell you that after the 462nd time, yeah, I think we're only in the 300, so we're still okay. Uh, dude, no, I I'm think scared. that we're probably around the 79 mark. <laughs> so, how about no, 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 19? No, 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 it's no. a 100, no, no, 19. It's, it's just no, funny because no, you're like, hey, I'm a blah. Oh, it's a great fucking Megadeth song. I'm like, okay. Well, it is. I, I agree. Bro. <laughs> so we're back to metal. Oh, Your turn. Go. There are two bands that lost singers that both these bands started. Look at his eyeballs, ladies and gentlemen. Huge. Huge. <laughs> huge. That started the British, uh, what's called the Invasion? new wave of oh. British heavy metal in 1980 something. Uh, my favorite band, Iron Maiden, Bruce, Springs- Bruce Springsteen, er, Bruce Dickinson left Maiden in 93 hmm. and they had a shitty solo career yeah, with Dick- one hit. Dickinson. <laughs> <laughs> called the Tattooed Millionaire. And then made That's Iron Maiden? No. That, no, no. That was Bruce. Yeah, with who? Oh, Bruce went solo. solo oh, he, And he had one hit called Tattooed oh, Millionaire. So he, for people who have zero metal yes. understanding, is Bruce Dickinson Iron Maiden? Bruce Dickinson is the lead singer of Iron okay, Maiden. Okay, thank you. That's I thought uh, he was. I thought you were reversing it. Particle streams going backwards. No, I, sir. Not forward. So uh, he left Iron Maiden to do a Maiden, thing in 83. He left Maiden he in like song. 93. And he did a couple solo albums, and the only song I know is Tattoo Millionaire. And Maiden uh, got a new singer who's f- horrible, and they the out the songs are very good, and the 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 lyrics are amazing because the bass player writes all the lyrics and writes all the music. So in two thousand, that guy's hard to lose. <laughs> yeah. So and also Maiden also lost their their main guitar player. So in two thousand, that main guitar player. And Bruce rejoined Maiden. So what I find interesting is that it's obvious that Bruce didn't do as well on his own. So then when Bruce comes back to Maiden in 2000 and they play the songs of those albums that were written when he wasn't there, they're fucking ridiculously amazing. And they just played one last year when I saw them. It's, it's, it's awesome. The the sum is greater or the total is greater than the sum of the parts. Absolutely right, sir. Weird that the same song has a different feel. That that's it's really compl- odd. it's super weird, dude. Must speak to the challenges that the other bandmates of his other band were had, or just the the. It's like you, tw- yeah. you and I, twenty eight years. Like Maiden was yes. together forever. They probably play so well off each other that they crush it. <laughs> they fucking crush it, bro. Yeah, bro. Awesome. The second metal band who I'm not a huge fan of. Judas Priest, Rod Helfer, the metal god, left Priest, I don't know what year, in the 90s, and they, Priest found this metal cover band singer, and he joined Judas Priest, because he sounded just like Rod Helfer, and the movie Rockstar, with Marky Marky and the Funky Munch, was based on that, and then Rod wanted to rejoin, so they let the other guy go. And I actually think the other guy, and I forget his name, Tim Ripper Owens. That's his name. Great Ripper voice. is a nickname, right? Ripper is a nickname. Thank God, because if his name... Well, actually, you know what? Ripper's cool, fucking badass name, cool right? cool a middle name would that be? It's like, right? That's almost as good as Wolf. Honey, what do you want to call him? Timothy, Timothy Ripper Owens. Um, we now have Timothy Ripper Pterodactyl. So we now have an official Ripper Timothy... Ripper Ripper. 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 Ripper Pterodactyl. But that's, I, that's I think it's really so cool quicker. that they found this. It's kind of like Journey. I was just going to say that. How you Steve Perry and they you... found a guy that sounds just like yeah, him. Yeah, in Australia at a fucking karaoke bar Fili- doing YouTube Philippines? fucking things. Yeah, the Philippines. He's, 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 Filipino? he's Filipino? Filipino or Australian. I always get him mixed yeah. up. I think he's Filipino. You're right. And it was but, at a fucking karaoke bar. However, 
listening to him do the old hit because they did a greatest it's hits there where he's really sang, good, no, dude. It sounds like a to me, it doesn't. It sounds really? quality, yes, but vibe completely off. It sounds like he's singing to the track. It sounds like it's a karaoke. Con uh, oh. He's at a karaoke. If you listen to that album, and I listen to it more critically probably than most, does it sound like Steve Perry? Yes, absolutely. Does it sound good? Is he rocking? Yeah. But the timing is like aw almost like he's just singing along to them, not part of them. It, okay. it almost seems like two set like they play and he sings. It's not like a band. That's not how it felt. It's a vibe. Now they did have a guy who looked like a Kenny G motherfucker in between those two. I they didn't were, know about yeah, Kenny G. It's not Kenny G, but it's some other guy that was with Journey after Perry left for all the time in like early eighties. Remember he did yeah. Solar Crew was oh Sherry. Yes. On, right? 82, 83. Yeah. And obviously, so they had until this guy came in like to that late 90s 2000s it had to be in 2000s i would think maybe even maybe i yeah. would think you're right it was youtube so it had to be it was yeah. a youtube sensation yeah and that's a very good point because steve perry left to be a solo artist right and he had one hit oh sherry so that's somebody not even on the list do you think that that was a mistake for him to leave the band apparently it was but again they're mtv that was you know they had separate ways and open arms and these all these freaking hits one after another right it did open arms faithfully faithfully i couldn't think of the name don't yes, stop sir. believing obviously yeah. what and what's interesting is but don't stop believing in my opinion strong is more powerful now in like an homage like raw raw cry kind of thing yeah that it was in its origination when it first came out i uh, can't argue with that reminds me of like bohemian rhapsody right and we're going to talk about some other we'll probably talk about that we will down the road i hope so i don't want to oh maybe well maybe someone's going to bring it up i don't so. fuck that my next one, if yes. I may. Um, anything else on? No, we're all we're all but, done with the medals, bro. And, and I think those were excellent, excellent points. And to your point, is like it sounded so awesome. It did without, or you know, without the guy, with the guy, and they sucked without. Yeah. And Journey, we don't need to touch Journey again. We already no, we already know we that. Touch the privates. Show show us on the Journey doll where they touched you. <laughs> was it in the Philippines that they P touched you? It, was it in the pterodactyl? Private parrot parts, patarts, patarts, um, pa -pa -pa tarts. My next one, Simon Garfunkel. I'm sorry, Simon Garfunkel. Oh, I'm such a fucking idiot. <laughs> Simon and Puffer. Paul Garfunkel and Art Simon. Um, no, Simon and Garfunkel. How about Paul Simon? I mean, I know they kind of broke up. Yeah, did they, how did that? But it's not like the Beatles. I mean, isn't the same? Can we make the same argument? So, Paul Simon as a solo artist. Okay. Did pretty fucking well. Yeah, he did. Me and Julio down by the school guard. Kodachrome. Um, you can call me Al. Oh, that's uh, a good jam. Graceland, the album, Diamonds in the Soles of Her Shoes. He, a, a lot of his solo shit was amazing. Together, they were unstoppable. Their harmonies were ridiculous. But look yeah. at where... Are, I'm sorry, Art who? Uh, what? Garfunkel? What, yeah, what, what, was his, what was his first name? Like, you could ask people up to, like, the 80s what his, what his name was, and they're like, Garfunkel. And you're like, what's his first name? And like, uh... Uh, Garfunkel, right? It's like Madonna, right? Like he was, he was, he disappeared. He virtually disappeared. Yeah. So that's, that's just my other one. This is small, sad. Back to you, um, sir. The last one I have, sir, is last what? the last one I have that actually left the band. Oh, the left rest the band. of them are people that I want to talk about. Okay. That Okay, that's not true. I have two left. Can I? Okay, so I'll go down a, after yours, if yeah. I may. I'll just go down the list of people that left. Okay. And we'll just do little drip drabs. I'll just get your feel on each okay. of those. Okay, I got two left that left the band. Okay, cool. I will start with No Doubt and Gwen Stefani. You earned it, man. Because that's on my list. I will have to thank Sydney for that because I was like, huh? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. So, and what's funny is I, I grew up right down the road from No Doubt. So I'm like, and I really liked them. They, they, they were really good. Like, they had a rock funk vibe. It was, it had was a good. Ska, it was like good. The music yeah. was, and I'm a metal guy, but I really liked, I didn't go buy the tape, but. It was or, poppy with an edge. It yeah, had an edge to it, it. yeah, it, it was had energy. Groovy. It had energy. And I liked that. You, you know, it was really good. The music was good, bum, and bum, even bum, like like bum. even the ballad was good on that first album. Yep. Maybe it was the first album. So, 
Don't uh, speak. What do you got? Well, that was no, it. that's yes. a great one. No, Don't that's speak. that's a beautiful. One. And you have, you said you had another one. Well, I mean, what about the fact? Let's talk about Gwen Stefani. She left yeah. the band and she became a goddamn global superstar. Yep. And then so, married Blake or did some other shit or whatever. Well, she married, married the, the guy, guy from Bush, the yeah. Bush guy, and then and they had seventy five kids. Sure. Whatever. Yeah, she um, had but, a very lucrative. But if career. you think about it, she left a rock punky groove type Ska, band punk, yeah, groove band. from yeah, Southern sure. California and she became a pop star where the music is very this is my subjective opinion the music is very overproduced and poppy and mass produced is that redundancy I am so sorry redundancy. that was a terrible statement I'm no I, I'm not allowed the, to talk no more the second you said that one I, I fucking hate it because it popped in my head because you say California and you hear punk and Scottish and whatever sublime yeah I didn't eat, wasn't even on my list because he passed right he died yeah Brad, Bra Bradley Bradley Noel sure Brad, god I probably got his name wrong I'm gonna get shit on for that one but um no you're not that was that was sad like where did Sublime? They just they literally fell off the well, face. Well, you have now a they death. Got this, well, they got this Rome guy now that sings with them. That's pretty good. But it sounds like they're doing a lot of the original stuff that got them popular, right? Well, Where they're, it's almost like they're their own tribute band. Isn't that what fans want to hear, though? <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I mean, I still would argue that if you want to be a band, you'd create new content. Well, yeah, you, you, you need it, to do that too, right? Right. But it almost felt like it became like a tribute band. It's like all we do is play. You know, wrong way and Santeria and in summertime, but but that was another one, another California one. But yeah, Gwen Stefani also became a brand. I mean, she became oh, global, right? Television, The Voice, and all that other stuff. Her relationship with with the Gavin guy from Bush, and then oh with yeah, Blake. Gavin, I forgot his name. Uh, yeah, so that's a really good one, and I had that one on there as well. You said you had another one, one more. Yeah, uh, the last one I have that's someone that left a band. I think is the biggest one on the list is Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go. Wham! Wham. Uh, Cause GB2 Never brought this up during the conversation. Again. Guilty feet have got no rhythm. Okay. And it's easy to, as you take a sip of a drink. So the question of the day check mark is, George Michael was in a band called Wham. With who? The other guy. Yes. What is his name? The other guy. What is his name? The other guy in Wham. That's his name. So, uh, GB2 has been known to join conference calls and announce himself as the other guy from Wham. Is his name? The or other guy? Or just the other guy from Wham? The, the moderator of the conference call will say, okay, hello, who joined? And GB2 will say, Andrew Ridgely, and I am on mute, giggling my ass off like a little girl. And people have no idea who this <laughs> And guy I'm is. like, ah, that's the way I'm going. <laughs> is that why it's the biggest one? Because it's like- Andrew it Ridgely is the other guy funny from bone. Wham. Andrew Ridgely. How is that? Okay, what constituted that the biggest for you? What, because George yeah. Michael, Wham had two, three hits. Careless Whisper, Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go. And then- then George Michael became massive. Like Freedom ninety was. Huge. I mean, like sex. I want your sex. Yeah, I want your sex. Yeah. Um, faith. Yeah, faith. Uh, faith. father figure. This the, he had hits, dude. He had yeah. number one hit after global. No, number global number one hits. hit after number one hit. Right for like years, years for years and years, years and years. So he. Three years. The reason why I say that he was the biggest one on my list is because his solo career dwarfs wham and i That's think you could even say some people don't even know he was in wham because yeah. father figure i even they i think they even said george michael and wham at some point like before he left i think right. it was like wham and then it was like george michael and wham and then solo career almost i feel i remember george michael and wham and i i don't know why i feel that I almost felt like they, and that might have been the demise, right? It's like he got so big for his britches that they're like, we're not, it's not and wham, we are, we are wham, asshole. I, I, I would agree with you. But if you look at faith or father figure. Yeah. Absolutely. Freedom you 90s. Would, yeah. You uh, would, you would, I would think the sales of those song singles and at the time before the, before the download, that, that that's probably bigger than wake me up before you go go 
uh, like the the number of MTV rotations, whatever. I don't know what the word is. Yeah, plays. Thank you. Number of plays or views or whatever you want. Sure. I guess it's views. Or I, I would think that his solo would would just outshine the Wham stuff massively. I can certainly agree with that because. What do you remember from Careless Whisper? Tell me what stands the out. The saxophone. To you. Yeah, not not <laughs> not the two band. Not not George or I mean, it is George singing, and you know it. You know, yeah. you know the song, but all you the that's saxophone all you hear and him singing. Right. I didn't but even know. I didn't even know there was music behind that. Right. I'm like, is that <laughs> Wham or is that George Michael? I don't even. It's fucking Careless Whisper, dude. I just like the saxophone. I don't know what to tell you, bro. I like saxophone as well. Okay. 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 Is that that Anything is else you have all on the that. ones of someone that's not true. I have one left. Okay, I'm, left. I'm Go. going to counter. Please. Before we continue there, I'm going to give you two, but I'm going to give you two where the person, in my opinion, eclipsed one definitely, and the other one could be arguably. And I would almost, it's 80s, Wham Factory. How about Annie Lennox leaving the Eurythmics? I didn't even think about it. She what? Who's the guy? What's the guy's name? No idea. With the beard. Yeah, and the guy. Oh, you know what know his it. name is? Andrew Ridgely. <laughs> um, I, isn't he the other guy in Wham? Oh, he's I mean, the he's the other guy in the Eurythmics. He's the other guy in every band. He's a Eurythmic. Is the Eurythmic. Uh, is yeah. the thing? Yeah, but do you I mean, remember? I can like, see his face, right? And he, yeah, I see him very clearly when you hear "Sweet Dreams Are Made of These," right? Like right. that was their biggest hit. Yeah. But Andy Lennox had "Why Walking on Broken." Glass. She had this weird, like international, like it. It wasn't our style of music to like per se. But it was quality music for its genre, for sure. And I forgot good music, she even you know? left. Yeah, and you don't even think about that, right? And she had a huge album in the 90s that huge. was huge. Uh, and I would bet that that album sold all Eurythmics all put together. Well, Sweet Dreams was pretty popular. It was huge, but do you hear it as much now? In any, yeah. I don't hear it as much now as I... I mean, it like faded over time where it hasn't had that resurgence yet. And well, sometimes it, it pops did up with, every once in a while. Name? Marilyn Manson. Yeah, did the cover. cover. So oh, that kind of brought it back for a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um but other than that, no, I don't I I don't know if, about the resurgent point. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. To that point, um the other person I would like to to recommend as possible Eclipser is Sting. Sting. Yeah, absolutely. The police. Now yeah, the yeah, police yeah. were awesome. Police were like reggae skyish, right? No yeah. doubt. It's funny. Some of these bands have this cool like vibe to them. Yeah. And do 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 da 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 and don't stand so close to me. Walking on the moon, um, dude. You know, every breath you take, the police I mean, all, hits go on yeah, and on, on man. and on. Yeah, but Sting, like, you know, feet, walking fields of gold, and some of his solo stuff. I I think he became more activist too, so he had more of a like the Gwen Stefani effect, where he was more not just a musician. Later in his career, he became a bigger piece of the puzzle, like as a full entertainer. In a way. Yeah. Yeah, a brand, like you said. Yeah, yeah, and a brand. Okay. I, I totally get that, but I would but think that awesome. I would think the police have a way yeah. bigger the influence they had, and I agree. I, their, I'm just saying their style yeah. and the number of hits they had, even before Every Breath You Take, which was just a massive MTV. Fucking people love that shit. That's about his ex wife. Uh, okay, you. I didn't. Uh, whatever. Well, every breath she takes, I'll be watching you. Uh, psycho. <sighs> Uh, Darth Vader, is that you? Did I ever tell you about my uh, my app I wanted to call Virtual Bushes? Did I share that on a, did I share that on a podcast already? No, what? Virtual Bushes. What does that mean? Well, okay, so... Oh, God, do I want to know? Probably not. Someone's oh, fuck, gonna do dude. Well, this is what I... Okay, so virtual... Are, you remember, like, back in the day, you heard, like, someone's outside the bushes, like, creeping on you? Like, st like stalking? Yes. Outside the bushes? Well, this is Virtual Bushes. Okay. What it, the concept would be, it takes... Every, every individual, because, you know, social media is all the algorithm shit, takes all the individual's posts from all their different social media platforms and con concentrates them onto virtual bushes, onto the virtual bushes app. And if you really want to see somebody, like, I want to know about Alice Smith. So you look up Alice Smith, and it's all of her shit all in one place, so you don't have to go to the Facebook and the Twitter and the Instagram and the TikTok and the Snapchat and the fans only. <laughs> Or OnlyFans? Which one is? Which is the one with the fucking dumb dude? Uh, anyway, no, isn't that a great idea? Where it just, but now the thing is, where it keeps from being stalkers, those people have to publicly post those things to be pulled. It's not anything private that's drawn. You have to have a public profile. Well, the thing is, Ann Smith would have 
profiles on all of these that are public. Yeah, so public she, profiles. Right. When she posts something on Twitter and she sends it to her people, it pulls that one. But if she had a private conversation, it wouldn't do that. Well, no shit. Right. I'm just saying, like, it wouldn't be intrusive because it's that per it's like it's like, you know, the criminal who throws out their trash on the curb. Once it's on the curb, like it's you can public go, property. It's public property, right? They can do they don't need a warrant to go through your trash, right? Yeah. It's kinda like that, where it just pulls in all the different I better go pull my trash can in, bro. But that's the point is See, that's the whole thing. That, that's where I thought this would go with social media is the virtual bushes kind of realm where people are just stalking you while looking at everything you post and just salivating and masturbating to everything. That's what I felt like social media would go. And it's kind of done that a little bit. But they imagine probably if, are salivating on the other thing, just not in the way you think. No, but imagine <laughs> getting it all pulled. But remember, uh, it's what the person posted. It's not like how you did we get took on this from them. topic? Um, police? Gwen Stefani? St Ding? What? I got stung. Oh, every breath you take. Fuck. I'll be watching you. We're yeah, so is. dumb. We something like that. Can we, can we, can we, can we move along, please? Please. Yeah. <laughs> I want to move along. Yeah. What, what do you got for Sting, uh, bro? Well, that was it. Sting, Sting had that stuff. It was really awesome. Oh, shit. I've got more. Uh, okay. Um, but you had, you said you had one more. I got so one left go that left, left the band. Go back to you, sir. Uh, I've got so many more. Rob Thomas left Matchbox 20. Good call. That's actually a very good choice. I didn't uh, put that one down. I forgot that he even had hits. I was like, oh, yeah, he's a good singer. Oh, <laughs> smooth with fucking Santana. Yeah, it's yeah. Huge. Well, I didn't, I didn't really, I'm like, okay, yeah, the Santana song was really good, right? But Or just popular for sure. Well, I liked it. Yeah, it I liked good, it too. I mean, I don't, I love all, I don't think there's a bad Santana song, actually, but I didn't really. I would argue that, but. Fuck off. Okay. So, it's you taste. racist. So. <laughs> Against musicians? <laughs> oh, you don't like... Against guitar. I don't like guitarists. I don't like solo guitarists. You're a guitarist. Oh, my God. You're a, no, you're a guitarist-ist. You're a guitarist-ist. So, I forgot. I mean, I I mean, I mean, knew he was in Matchbox 20, and I remember some of their songs, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, he left. Oh, yeah, there's a Santana song. <laughs> so, I... And he uh, does have a pretty decent yeah. career. Yeah. So, I, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to add that to the list. Excellent. Should um, he have left? He's doing well without them, and they've rejoined. Aren't they going to do? Points. I heard they were going to do a reunion tour. Well, that's that the other thing is too. Canceled, this whole right? leaving, coming together thing, like breaking up completely. It's hard to do. It, Neil Sedaka did say it best, <laughs> sir. Um, to that to that end, though, um, coming back, like doing doing a solo thing while you're in a band, that's totally cool. It felt like that was a breakup, though. Darius Rucker pops into my mind with Hootie. I didn't even think about did that. Did he leave Jesus him? Christ. How did that hey, happen? He has, a, he has a fucking country no, 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 career. No, no, I understand that, but how did he leave the Hooters? Hooties. The, the Hooties? What and are they? Hootie and the Blowfish. The Blowfish. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't. And he's not, even, a... he's not even Blowfish or nor Hootie. I don't even know where the whole name, regardless of all that. His solo country career it's is massive. fucking gigantic. Gigantic. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's a black man singing country. Yeah. And crushing it. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Kudos. Right. He's, fu he's fucking ridiculous. So why did good. he leave? I don't know if they broke up or whatever, but they seem to be good friends again because I think he still hangs out with them. I think he just wanted to do his own thing. Sometimes it's, look, you move on. I mean, that just makes sense. Like, it's part of life. Your kids grow up, they move out. Oh, hopefully, if you have kids and they turn 18, you want them to move out, out right? right? We certainly hope so. Um, anything, any closing arguments? That's on? all I have on Matchbox 20. The rest of them are all, uh, people that have not left, but I was wondering what the impact would have been if they did. Okay. So we're going to do quick fire. I'm going to give you one. Yeah. I need your reaction about all of them. And I'll, if I need to explain, it's like I'll the explain. lightning round. It's kind of like a lightning round. Okay. I'm yeah. set. I'm ready to get roll, ready. Okay. Bro. Ready? Yes. Go. New edition, Bobby Brown. <sighs> well, it's my prerogative. I was going to say it was I, your prerogative I, to do what you want to do. Yeah. I remember dancing that at the military ball in my freshman year um, of high school. Um, I got to like new edition better. I don't know what to okay. tell you. But I mean, Bobby Brown was the ig after he left. He was big. He for, was big. He had, look, he got to bang the shit out of Whitney a <laughs> lot. And how, how many kids they pop? How many kids she pop out of his? Kids. I don't fucking know. Oh, don't ever say bang the shit out of Whitney ever again, please. There's a Except for what's her name? Bobby Brown has not had a good family thing. He's lost his wife, he's lost his daughter, and he lost, I think, some other person wow. recently. That's not good. It just dude. came up. Yeah, it's he's like snake bitten in the personal world. But uh yeah. Anyway, I get it. But you know what? New edition was huge. Were were they the which one was that? 
Right Stuff and Hanging Tough was Not New Kids them. on the Block, right? Correct. And KOTV. And I didn't do any of those because none of them had a real perfect solo career after. But Bobby oh, Brown had the biggest of New Edition. Shit. Okay, go ahead. Right? Um, okay, ready? Yeah. The Smiths. Girlfriend in a coma, girlfriend in a coma, I oh know. Or hang the DJ. Morrissey. Yeah, Morrissey. Yeah, okay. I get them in the cure confused. So I was like, Absolutely. I had that to, would be I Robert to, Smith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, why, because Smith I had and Robert to, Smith. I knew Morrissey. And then when I hear Morrissey and I hear the Smiths on Sirius XM First Wave, I don't know. I don't know which one's which. I don't know. They, I don't know. I don't know them well enough to know what's the solo and what's the band. Right. His voice was so. It's iconic, I, dude. It, it so defines whatever music he's singing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. it's the forefront. It's he's got this little kind of draw. And it just it's it you know it's him, right? It's just awesome. like you know you two just like you know Bono's Bono. Right. Or Steven Tyler, Steven Tyler. Right. The Coldplay guy, Chris Martini. Ugh. Apple Martini. <laughs> apple Amaya Martini. Um okay. Sour Apple. So what Martini? are your thoughts on that one? Uh I it's hard to your point. Smiths were good, but Morrissey you know I don't know. Hard, I don't know yeah. how to answer that because I'm not I don't know. I'd have to look and see the, the hits on both. I don't know. Okay. I like them both because I hear them all the time, but I can't tell them apart. You know what I'm saying? Go. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to do one more for me, and then we'll do a couple of Megsies. We'll okay, yes. We're still in the lightning round. Okay, next one. Yeah. There's a band called Take That. Okay. Have you ever heard that band, Take That? No. Okay, they did a song like, whatever I do, whatever, I want you back for good, I want you back. It was like a, a British band. But then they had a, guy named Robbie Williams who left. Okay. He did a song called Millennium. So that might be a little obscure. I have no idea what you're talking about. Perfect. Next one on the lightning <laughs> round. Uh, we'll just do this one. Uh, Destiny's Child Beyonce. Don't care. Bro. I know there's one. What the hell is the second one? Uh, Knowles something. What's the second person's name? What's the third one? It's kind of like the thing where you talk about. Oh, with, what's Supreme that third? Yeah. And what's the Andrew third? Ridgely. Yeah. What's yeah. Number three. Andrew Ridgely is the third <laughs> member of Destiny's Child. The but guy was, from the Eurythmics. <laughs> oh, he had sweet wet dreams. Hey now. Hey now. Noc nocturnal emissions. Anyone? <laughs> um, but yeah, I know you don't care about Beyonce, but let's be honest. She is pretty iconic now. She's well, the queen, again, right? a She's global a superstar. Yeah, yeah, I get it. And Destiny Child was still good. And she yeah, was they that were much good, better, but obviously but she made the right decision leaving or doing and, and she, she marketed yeah. herself better and she listened to her advisors better and I made a shit ton of money and then they made lemonade. Do you know what it reminds me of? Vodka and lemonade? No. Like her greatest move was probably date, uh, marrying Jay-Z. Probably didn't okay. hurt. And then, because it, Gave her a content also after, but they're pretty big. They're pretty, 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 pretty big. Did I ever tell you about the Bobcat Goldthwait thing about Jerry Seinfeld's greatest uh, attribute? You did. Yeah, okay. I just, it's one of those things where it reminds me of that. Like her, one of her greatest moves really hadn't, I mean, it had to do with her, but the dude helped. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> uh, I can't. H to the Izzo. All right. That was pretty good. N next. Yes. We're going to go quickly. Yes. In sync, Justin Timberlake. I, I, yeah. That, I mean, come on, man. Bye, bye, bye. Uh, J, I mean, JT's, an, again, a superstar and, and that dude very, very, very talented and funny. And, uh, I think I might be more in love with him than his wife. So, uh, uh Beal would you rather him, have a threesome with him and Jessica or with the Beckhams? The Beckhams. Are you sure? Yeah, because why? Okay, <laughs> emotionally, oh. I'd want to. I'd want to be held by Justin because I think like Justin's just be so tender to hold me. Yeah, okay. After yeah, and Jessica would probably Beal or not Beal, the other one. Yeah, Beal. No, Beal. Yes, not Alba. Beal. Not Alba. Beal. I always get A and B mixed up. Yeah, um, Beal would probably be the one smacking us around. She's probably got the fucking dominatrix outfit. And she's like, get in there, dog. Good bark, bark, you little oh, shit. Rough. And I'll be like, Justin, just hold me after this. Can I get some aftercare? <laughs> Justin, please? Justin, your wife is scaring me. Oh my God. <laughs> but, with, but with Posh and David, I'm yeah. fucking pitching the hell out of both of them motherfuckers. I'm like, all right, you get you both bend over. Look, okay, so I would draw the question. Let's move along. All right, well, JT you asked had I would draw the question. JT you, you asked. JT had a obviously, I think, made a amazing decision, had an still has a great solo career, right? Right. And what's interesting about Instinct is too, it's also when we talk boy band, there's a fine line between boy band 
and a band of guys that got together themselves, right? Boy bands are constructed. Yeah, produced. Well, Justin yeah. did not know Joey, did not right. know Lance, did not know, or I, I hope, do I have the names right? I don't Lance even, is correct. Okay, and Joey is for tone for I sure. Don't, okay, yeah. That's three of the five. I don't know the, whatever, Jordan three fifths. McKnight, well, some other, like, J- JC, whatever. They were all placed together by some guy. By the guy who took advantage who, of them. Who took advantage, absolutely, but he also put them together. There's a very fine line. How much? How much credit? Does that guy get for putting them together, and how much shit does he get for manipulating right. and, and taking it's as a much very as he did? Good question. Because with, without the, him, to the elected versus running your shit point, you can't do anything till you get elected. You can't be a boy band unless there's boys that he put together to make a band that are awesome. Yeah. So the ch- chicken and egg, but it's also, I mean, once they were created, he did manipulate, and he obviously stole from them, right, and all that shit. But he also created the product. <sighs> Just cry me a river, dude. You know what that one's about? I do. I, I listen to Thanks. We, we we listen to our boom. own podcast. High five. What up, bro? We listen to our own podcast. It's in one of them. I think it's the Taj one, right? <laughs> the Taj one. That's correct. <laughs> Two hours. That is a good song. I mean, I'm not a no, pop. Yeah. I, I'm not a pop music person, but that is a good song. I think you would actually like some of his la one of his more recent albums. It's it's got like a little harder, like he's got some edgier stuff to it. It's just got a little it's good. Cry me a river, dude. Not a good slayer song. Is it a Slayer song? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a decent any other? Uh, but I, I got to give JT credit because he yeah. he's funny. Like when he's on Saturday Night Live. He's a person. He's fucking yeah. funny, dude. He, he makes dick in a box. Yeah, Fuck. right? Come on down to Taco Town. Like, that shit's really this funny. shit is hilarious. Yeah. The single ladies thing he did with a- Adam, Adam Sandberg. Beyonce's backup dancers. Oh, 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 I don't, oh, oh, I you never saw, saw that? that. I have, you well, must I'll watch stay. it tonight, calm down. No, you must stay to watch that I'm after. Not, it don't, is the, don't, you're not the boss minutes. of me. You're not Bruce Springsteen. But I'll be on my knees begging. No, uh, please. <laughs> Move along, JT. I'll be on my knees begging you like this. Okay. Stop it. Meg, Megzi's last one. Yeah. Before we go to the what ifs, because I, so lo- I love the, what ifs. The second lightning round. Yeah, I love second lightning round. The Eagles. Uh, let's let's just go this way. Jo- uh, Joe, Walsh Joe Walsh had a solo career prior. He had one hit. He had a solo. Well, I got my mind's what? around. It goes 185. But I'm, bum, bum, bum. I lost my license. And, and now I, I don't drive. drive. That's one. But they also had the Rocky, Rocky Mountain High. Dun, 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 dun. He had two really big that He's I remember. He's a two hit wonder. But he had a solo career going in before the Eagles picked him up, right? Okay. But they only had two albums with him before they broke up. Okay. Hotel California. Yeah. And The Long Run. Those are arguably the, yeah, the, best. the absolute best. And once again, I, I'm looking down this list, and I've been to a lot of these concerts. I saw Hotel California last year. Yeah. Uh, today is December 13th. We didn't say it. December 13th, 2020. I went uh, last year, September 27th, I believe, uh, in Vegas when they were doing Hotel California where they played the album. Yeah. And they played it front to back. Right, I remember. Fucking awesome and they still rock it glenn and fry is dead to you right glenn fry is dead dead <laughs> he's dead. his son's Not there dead dead his son could be <laughs> glenn fry's just dead but once again to that point when they disband they all had solo careers don henley probably don had, henley, had glenn probably fry. the greatest solo career yeah glenn fry and then joe walsh i would say and timothy b schmidt was with a band then joined them and then did his own thing and then came back but he was like the bass player he's okay but you know, Friday, uh, Glenn Fry was on the last boys. Game. It's not working. Soundtrack. He did the Friday night's a good night for football. Did that thing right before the guy. Uh, I don't remember that. Ain't that a bitch right in the beginning in last boys. Game. I don't remember that. With Damon and Bruce. I don't remember the movie, dude. I'm not going to watch you just that remember, shit. I, it's not working. That's because you say it all the time. Because it's funny. I just okay, remember so Don Henley from Dirty Laundry and... In laundry and uh, the, bo- the boys, boys of summer, boys of summer. So he had a bunch of yeah. hits in the mid eighties. New York right? Minute, boys of summer, end of the innocence. Yeah, that was uh, a good. Ju- that was a good tune right there. There are some. Um, 
There's and then the heat is on from Beverly Hills Cop, the first one. Yeah, that's, that's the Fry, opening right? scene that's Fry, of Glenn right? Fry. Yeah. yeah. So those two guys had some really good yeah. songs. And my understanding from what I was told by Megzi, because Megzi and her momsy are uh, aficionados of the Eagles. I'm not going to say anything other than that. They just really like them. <laughs> and um, they know a lot about it. But Fry allegedly did all the arrangement for okay. the band. So Musically. once again, it was one of those things where these individuals were able to fit the right pieces together. Yeah. And they were really awesome together. But arguably good on their own. I mean, and, and how many drummers left? Like Steve Winwood. I didn't even think about it. Leaves yeah, traffic and right? does Steve Winwood, right? Um, Peter, I'm sorry, Phil Collins. Don yeah. Henley. Like, it's interesting. These are a lot of these are drummers who yeah. aren't, they're never in the front anyway. So maybe that desire to be in the front, they maybe they always wanted to be in the spot, in the spotlight. Maybe that was one of their driving factors. They wanted to be the front, not necessarily ego, but to some extent, they wanted the spotlight because drummers are never in this, they're always in the back. Man. Correct. So, what are your thoughts on that? Final thoughts before you continue with your what ifs? Uh, I think that. Um, my fourth favorite band on the list, Rush, may Neil rest in peace. I don't think they get enough credit for, they. no one ever left the band. Well, they kicked one guy out in 1977 or something, but whatever. Um, Did anyone leave the Stones other than death? No, just cocaine up their noses. Aerosmith? Keith's nose. So the Led point Zeppelin. is- Yes, well, death. Right, but outside of death, did anyone leave these bands as well? Because well, they, they get credit for that as well, right? I mean, yeah, they, they lost people not by their own desire. Correct, but to your point about drummers is that the drummer for Rush wrote every single lyric for 40, 35 years, and he wrote a lot of the music as well. So... A lot of people don't give drummers the credit. So to your point about being out, wanting to be out front, Neil Peart never, ever, 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 ever took a bow with the band at the end of a concert, and they played three thousand shows right until the last show they ever, ever, ever played together. What? He never took a bow with the band ever until the last show they ever played together at the end of their 40th anniversary tour. The R40, right? R40 in LA at the Forum, the last show. He jumps from behind the drum set and surprises the guys because he didn't want to tell anybody he was going to do it so that they could take a picture together on the last show they ever would play together. And I thought that was fucking badass. I like to speak about Neil Peart. I'm sorry, Neil Peart. And just his general amazingness. What day did you hear? The, remember the day of the week yeah. that you heard Neil Peart died? Thursday. It was a Thursday. What day did he actually Monday. die? I think it was Monday or Tuesday. Monday. Because yeah, it was three days. I heard Tuesday. Okay. But regardless, we did not hear about Rush's drummer's death in this world of crazy of well social media and just how instantly information gets pat like gets spread yeah till two days later which to me speaks to his privacy and how amazing oh yeah he, well he was like, always how humble like that. or private he was he was incredibly private and i read he just wrote eight books i've read them all and he's an incredible he's very good author uh i would encourage ghostwriter is an incredible book about pain his wife died and his daughter died in the, the same 10 month period and he wrote about that and you could feel the suffering coming off the pages and you're like oh my god this poor fucking dude he's the best drummer in the world and he's a millionaire and he has his he has nothing right he's he's a fucking shell it's just gut-wrenching so it makes the timing of my joke it makes a shitty movie that much worse doesn't it oh it's a fucking terrible movie yeah but it's about rebirth too like right. You know what? What happened? Tell me. Tell me about the book. I think we talked about that. Didn't we, we did. I don't want to regurgitate okay. it. Basically, I, he went I, on, a, on like a whole motorcycle. He went on a two-year, like fifty-five thousand-mile yeah. motorcycle journey. But awesome. the point. I don't know how to point to this. God damn it! You did. Fuck. He was humble, and he yes. he was he, he was, was a very drummer in the back. Yes, thank you. Drummers so, in the background the, who the point contributed is, a lot, yet got very little right notoriety. But he's very, he was a very private person. My point is that he. I'm a big fan, a huge Rush fan. Seen him live a bunch of times, etc. And I follow them on social media. He fought brain cancer for three and a half years. I did, that was not public information. 
I didn't even just kn- like his death. Just like his. That's my exactly my point. Is that I- any of these people that we're talking about today can be that private, right? Like they didn't even the the, the well. It's basically there's a company that runs the band, right? The public relations. Eh, no pun intended. Uh, Edward Bernays, you son you of a bitch. So it just shows that this person is so incredibly private. They didn't even announce that he was sick, dude, for three and a half years. That's crazy talk. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, before we continue with your what ifs. Yeah. Hello, Dude World. Do you have any bands that you'd like to contribute? Come on and leave us some messages. Yeah, for real. And while you're at it, try to follow us. Please. And, and comment. Rate, download, review, uh, and also all those things. Uh, Podbean and the Spotify and the yeah. iTunes. Buy us a coffee. Yeah, on the on the Ko-Fi. The Ko-Fi. <laughs> Ko-Fi dot com. K o hyphen f i dot com spells coffee. I don't know if you knew that or allegedly. Allegedly, no, it does. It's coffee. not allegedly. It does. It's not Ko-Fi like SoFi. It's coffee. 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 K o f i. K o hyphen f i dot com. Yeah, I gotta get that hyphen in there. Yeah. But buy Christopher Coffee. We love uh, Flat Whites. We just mentioned Flat Whites. Love Flat Whites. A Venti. Of course, we need 20 ounces. Yeah, we need a 20 ounce. And, <laughs> we, and we need a little frap, a frap action or something. All so that please, shit. please. But we, we're we actually more interested in hearing what your thoughts are because I know I didn't put everybody, but there were some that Chris mentioned that I was like, huh? Oh my God, that's awesome. I'm sure there were some I mentioned. You're like, oh yeah, okay, cool. Or at least like a little thing. So we'd love to hear from you. Now let's do our what if, sir. It's your turn over there. Culture Club. What if Boy George left Culture Club in the mid 80s at their height? After Karma Chameleon. He did and do a solo career. He did, but he didn't. I think they just broke up. I think they well, just right. dissolved. I mean, they, they fizzled out. Disbanded. Whatever yeah, you want to they, call. They, were, they were kind of a, a little bit of a flash in the pan. Yeah. It was it was perfect music for the times that they for the time they played. It was about a three to five year window of yeah, Tom, yeah. Thompson Twins, yes. Culture Club. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that British feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Spandau so Ballet. If, what would Spandau if, Ballet. Take on nice. uh, uh, take, uh-huh. uh, Aha, uh, Kajagugu, oh, Flock of Kajagugu's. Seagulls. Very, very one hit wondery era. Era. Because the style of music had a like almost like uh, just an expiration date on it. Well, yeah, it was very, very Synthy specific. And, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, but go ahead. Yeah, please. But I just found it interesting that if if Boy George left at their height because they had number one hits, they had three or four number one hits. You know, in the UK and the US, they were huge on MTV. And what would have happened if he's like, "Fuck you guys, I'm out of here!" Right when they were at their prime. Boy you know? George was a colorful character in a colorful world as MTV was growing. Yeah. If that made sense. Like, yeah, Boy yeah, George yeah. was like a personality. He had the cool dreads in his hair. Right. And the, color. the makeup. I, the, yes. The look. I believe he eventually came out as either bi or gay. Or right. Gay yeah, I think so. Or homosexual. Yeah. Whatever it was. Didn't yeah. matter. Yeah. What was, though, he was magnanimous when he was, everyone had eyes on, what's Boy George wearing today or whatever? Like, what's his yeah, hair color? Right. Like, you know, you watch uh, Time, Give Me Time. Do you oh, really want to hurt me? Yeah. Uh, Culture Club, Time's on, Give Me Time. That's the other one. Yeah. And yeah, Boy George was huge with them. Yeah, they definitely, if he wasn't part of it, it did become Boy George and Culture Club yeah, too. exactly. Towards the end, like right. George, Michael, no, and Wayne. Nobody knows who the other three guys are. It's Boy George. And it's one of those things where it, you can't look away. He's like, he's almost, I mean, I've never seen him, never met him, obviously, but he's magnetic. You can't, you're like, you want to know what he's doing. You want to look, you want to know what he does next. You know what I mean? How, honestly, they were, they were influential in a very large way for, but for a very short time, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To the point, but it's so powerful that Adam Sandler puts a Boy George lookalike in his wedding. Oh wedding yeah, singer. totally right. Right. Oh he my god, puts, they're turning on George. Right. <laughs> That's just right? hilarious. It's, it's, it's right. It was oh, he yeah. was such an iconic figure even yeah. that he was in Adam Sandler's mind right. when doing Wedding Singer, which was an eighties based like yeah. parody. Do you or, like fuck a comedy. Seagulls? Yeah, like. Give me time. Yeah. Like that was amazing, right? That just yeah. tells you how bored George was. All right, man. I'm I'm curious to hear these next ones because these are fun. All right. Next is red hot chili peppers. What would have happened if Anthony Kiedis left Orfley. 
or flea. I agree. Or flea left right after under the bridge was huge. Instead of doing the chase together with uh, Charlie Sheen. <laughs> And they get away. You no, know, bro. You know, Dave. No, Dave. We tried to run off the road, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite scenes of any movie. Oh, shit, I totally forget about that terrible. one. But go, yes, please. Yes, on the five freeway Mach on the, the way Mach to Mexico. Yeah. So what, you know, under the bridge and the, they had some fucking great. Blood sugar sex magic. Yeah, it was an amazing it's album, right? It's a desert, so desert, desert album. When that album, album is at its peak, Anthony goes, yeah, I'm out and I'm going to do my own solo thing. What? How would have the band and how would he have done? Yeah. What what would the music, how would his music have been as a solo artist? Would Red Hot Chili Peppers have even continued without him? Yeah. Or with Flea? I and know that's Fle a, And Flea was a personality. That dude. Absolutely. I could not agree more, dude. And you know it's Flea when you hear it. Like, yes. It's one of those things where like, just yes. like you know when Primus played Don't But The Yeah, no, the bass, like the bass is very recognizable. It's a very... I, I remember hearing a song. It wasn't a Red Hot Chili Pepper song. I think it was one that Flea was playing on or something. But you hear this and you're like, that's Flea. But you're just, you just know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. That's a really awesome one, too. And I'm very curious. Like, if you pick if, a lot of Cali guys because, it, like, it's kind of your area, your well, time growing up. Well, I'm just saying, like, it's not a criticism. It's kind of like, because I, I would pick Philly guys. Like, yeah. What if, you know, the roots didn't break up? They wouldn't be on Jimmy Fallon right now. Oh, you know? wow. That's. No Just shit. Saying. But I think that what would Anthony's solo career have been like? You know? Very subpar. Very like I felt like Dave like Dave when Dave Navarro left, for example, uh, oh. porno not porno Jane's addiction. Yeah. Then he went to porno for pyro or no. Uh the Perry Farrell went to porno for pyro. Dave Navarro left and went to Red Hot Chili Peppers for a bit. Right. But he didn't get it. It just didn't, I didn't seem to click that well. And then, but then he disappeared. Now he's doing tattoo fucking reality TV shows. So, <laughs> no, I mean, he, right. look, I get, don't I get, get me you. wrong. He had his, he got his, he got his, he got his, um, whoosh, little like wet all the time inside Carmen Electra. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, he was with her. Yeah. 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 That's a, that's well worth Hopefully worthy. he went to the clinic after that. Uh, I hope they both did. Oh, gross, dude. Um, that was his needle on her. Like, that's how he tattooed her. Was that before, yeah, after yeah. Um, Dennis Rodman? Uh, same time, maybe? <laughs> MFM? Was it an MFM trip Manon? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, move along. Uh, uh, yeah, but anyway. Red Hot Chili Peppers. No, Dave Navarro left, right? Same kind yeah. of thing. Like, and Perry Farrell. Like, but they kind of, I don't know if they broke up or whatever. And they did different stuff that just never had the same that yeah, Jane's they, Addiction they had. They couldn't, would you say they just could not recapture the magic? Yeah, and, and like, Ketis and Flea together had a match I agree like, and a well, thing between and the drummer Chad I, Chad, Chad, Chad Chaz, correct Chad, Chad is now um, da, uh, cool. Sammy Hagar's drummer okay in, yeah, uh, and this he, per, in the circle he's good he's he's a no, solid no the circle he's in uh, chicken foot chicken uh, foot chicken <laughs> oh you're thinking perfect circle with uh, no, Pulsifer the, the circle okay, is Sammy right. Hagar's band right. with Bonham as the drummer yes Michael Anthony right and I cannot remember the guitar player's name right but we could all we we Super okay, jot this down. Okay, super bands, Velvet Revolver, Audio Slate. Like we have to talk. We have to do a podcast on those super bands. Okay, ones that were put together. Right? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Hey, do you have like one or two? You no you, seventeen. Seven. I have nineteen. So okay. Um. Okay. So we're Red Hot Chili Peppers. Red Hot Chili Peppers is a really awesome one. Okay. And you're. The chicken foot thing is a great point, like about getting these guys assembled too. Yeah, the Chad. Chad was good, and then Dave Navarro came on as a sec, another, as a as a the other guitarist. But I see that's the guy I didn't know, right? I know it was Bono, but you had Bono and Edge and the other guys, right? You still at least knew yes. Edge's name. If or the something. other guys had a cool name like Edge, <laughs> like Pepsi, Razor, or you know something, yeah, right? Then you would remember them. But if your if their name is Frank Johnson, then you're like. I don't know. I know Bono and Edge, but I don't know Frank Johnson. You know, shit. So that's what the weird part is. That's how it works, man. What's your next one? That, all right, I got two left. Beautiful. Um, They're both huge. Huge. I will go with U2. What if... I didn't even know you were going to talk about U2 next, bro. Did you see... <laughs> Did I precog you, ourselves my, again? Dude, I feel like you should it's hug like, me. You precog me so hard. It's like we're the same person sometimes. It's disgusting. Sorry that there's two of us out there. Barfasaurus Rex. So if if Bono left you two right after the Joshua Tree album, 
Would, then, they, then he would have made shitty albums like Achtung Baby and fucking uh, <laughs> Zuropa. So Zuropa. So, so I know you're you have a point and you're going to get there, but right off the bat, that alone they should not have made. So fuck them for that. Okay, thank you for your hostility. <sighs> Sorry, I, I, what's, uh, I'm breathing. I'm rubbing my. Hand. Okay, if he hadn't left at Joshua Tree, which was the greatest album peak of them, that was their peak. Yeah. So. How would his solo career be different? Would would it be more rock? Would it be heavier? Would it be more ballads? Would it be more folk centric? You know, I, I I don't know. Would would you two cease to exist altogether? Would those guys try to find a new lead singer? Would they all find different projects? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I think the band would disappear, and I think. Y- Bono would have a band called Bono and he'd get a bunch of idiots and they'd make shitty music because I think U2 is Bono and, and the Edge are kind of lightning in a bottle. It's special. Yeah. It is special. Uh, yeah. I mean, some of these duos are special. I yeah. Mean, like, going back a couple to Van Halen, yeah. we didn't talk about An- Michael Anthony Smith. Like, him getting booted, Michael Anthony getting booted yes. for no Eddie's reason. son. Well, I, we don't know, but... Well, his... Eddie Van Halen's okay. son, Alex is a drummer, and Eddie Van Halen's son becomes the new bass player, correct? Yes. I, I'm just saying. That's what happened, correct. I'm not going to read into it because I don't know what happened. However. I'm, right, nobody knows Because Michael happened. Anthony ha- plays bass with Cabo too, right? Sammy, with Sammy, Sammy's, right? Sammy's in both Sammy's bands. In Chick- okay. And I actually love, I love Michael Anthony. Yeah, he's a I, great bass player and a great backup singer. Love that, and the And the keys in Jump. No, that's Eddie. Is it Eddie? Yes, I thought, I watched... No. Eddie plays piano. I could have sworn that I watched Mm -hmm. Michael Anthony doing that at the Foreign Lawful Cardinal Knowledge Tour. Mm -hmm. I swear. I stand. Eddie plays piano. I I sit corrected, bro. That's right, bro. Regardless. Ill ill regardless. To to, 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 Michael Anthony, the bass, the former bass player of Van Halen for many years, issued a statement that says, I don't know why I was kicked out of Van Halen. I have, I have no idea. I was never told. I just, I was. He doesn't know still to this day. Or that's his claim. Well, that's what he said. Right. That's his claim. Right. Well, we don't, once well, again. same with Sammy. I, I believe his claim. Yes. No, I believe him. That's not, that's not a thing, but it's still, once again, I have no, I don't know. <sighs> we we're not flies no on the wall. Yeah. Right. He he says that, but that could be to save embarrassment too. If he that's a good point. was a douche. I, I mean, I do believe him. And I believe him too. That's not, and. You're, yeah, but I see what you're saying. I'm not saying he's shady, but once again, you and I have always said we need to vet the things that we're told. This guy told us something. That, that'd be something worth vetting. I'm not saying we're going to go investigate that, but it is what it is. I believe that he wasn't told either. And it's just really kind of coincidental. Not critical at all that Wolfgang, EVH's son, is now the bass player. Yeah, I, I get it. I I'm see not your point. criticizing him for that. I don't criticize anyone. But that did seem pretty odd because Alex is a drummer. Now three quarters of the band. Now basically the band is 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 Van Halen. But maybe that was the whole goal all along. Wouldn't that be awesome was. that Eddie got to play with Wolf with his son? Well, was was Van Halen right? Was yeah. But the, can they still be Van Halen without him? Without Eddie, no. Why? Because Alex is in it. Wolfgang's in it. I'm just asking. I'm not because Eddie is the greatest guitar player to ever live. Okay. So no. Can't you get the second greatest in like Brian May? Because I just precogged you, I think. You did, but Brian May is not even in the top 10. It's, he's in the No, top. it's fucking... He's top it's 15. Hendrix and Van Halen are top two. Hendrix? Jimi Hendrix. Hendrix was so abstract, though. He, I don't know if he could do a band thing what in a band. What he did... Yes. Changed guitar, changed yeah. music and guitar playing. It probably had... Correct. The, the acid had a lot to do with it. <laughs> well, that, Perhaps. that's another... That's another so, point, yeah. Um, or, or the... What do you call him? The LSD, the phycochromatics. What is it called? Psilocybin. Psilocybin. The psycho. The, the psychotropic. The psychotropic medications. <laughs> the fucking shrooms, bro. So, um, yeah, Hendrix and or in Van Halen and are the top two guitar players ever. So, you, but was Hendrix the best band? See, that's the thing, though. But greatest guitar player. In, what about Ray Vaughan? Stevie Ray Vaughan. He's number three. Okay, but but Jimmy, yes, so identical. That's not what we're talking about on this podcast. But as a band, uh, you know. Eh. If we could get Jimi Hendrix to come down from heaven and join Van Halen, yes. Okay, what if Stevie Ray Vaughan, what if we could exhume Stevie Ray and bring him in? Is it because he's three, he, he's no good? 
I would I would allow it. Okay. Also, to dime far, bag Daryl from okay. Pantera. I'm saying, how far would you? How far <laughs> would we just took a tangent? But how far would you? Would you take this rabbit hole in the guitarist? Uh, I take Chuck Berry. I know oh, it sounds yeah, weird, but for real. But like he started it all. Yeah, Chuck like, Berry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chuck Berry did yeah. with the guitar. Well, what no, absolutely no one. Did. Chuck Perry stole it from Michael J. Fox. Oh, that's right. From Marty the kicking, McFly. The kicking thing? That's right. This It's your cousin. Marty, we got to go back. <laughs> Listen to, to this. Future. <laughs> that's right. Awesome. Uh, awesome little tangent. Yeah. We're reeling it back in. All right. So you two. We're Dive. Dive, bro. Dive. So after you two oh, you. would. You're talking. Shut the fuck up. Would Bono's music suck? Check mark. Yes. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. Do you have anything else or do you want me to go to my last one? Keep going. Last one, bro. Queen. If Freddie Mercury listened to the record companies and left the band and went solo, what would have happened? How would his music as a solo artist been different? Would Queen have got a new singer? You, in the front. Excellent points. I will break it down in a couple of things. Uh, I did do a little research on Queen because I knew we were talking hypotheticals and that was one we brought up prior. So I looked him up. He did do three solo albums. I didn't just, know that. Right, and that's just histor history. I, I can't tell you what they are. I've no, Yeah. Right. I don't know. Me neither. But I can tell you, Queen's Greatest Hits is the greatest single selling album of all time that really is, that is it yeah i looked that up as wow, well that no is shit. queen's greatest hits now that obviously has all of their stuff but i do have that let's just go yeah i have it too and that was the tape i bought in my dotson 510 nice when i now my 1980 dotson 510 it was the was, first thing you heard new fat to bottom me. girls fat bottom girls was on there and bicycle race bicycle nice and i like fat bottom girls oh man Bought the tape at a flea market for twenty five cents. Oh hell yeah! Or the mother. I, it was a British version. This is back in the. This is nineteen ninety. I is spent ten dollars on iTunes. I, I'm sixteen years old, and it's nineteen ninety. And I find this thing, and it's smudged and whatever. Played it, and that's all we did was play that tape ad nauseum, around, all the way around through. Fat Bottom Girls, Bicycle Race, Bohemian Rhapsody, um, We Will Rock You, We Are the Champions, Flash, Flash. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. Now, tell me how influential Bohemian Rhapsody has been number one now three, three times. times. Three, three times. Back when it started, yeah. there was a resurgence during the movie or during Wayne's World. Yes. And then during the, the, movie. the movie. But three times it has hit number one. I know, I know of a couple that have done it twice, but th that sounds virtually impossible. That a song can last for three decades, four decades, almost four decades, four well, four plus. Yeah. No, to be number one again. Right, 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 right. I got it, you. you know, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, please, but please yeah, expound I, I, on your I, thought. I, on, no, on, I'm on, just. On I I, I have no idea. Because Freddie was such a larger than life figure, and so creative lyrically and musically, but he was so entrenched with the band. And they all came up with ideas. And so I don't, I, I'm, as an, as a music psycho, I'm so appreciative of the fact that he didn't leave and that he appreciated the loyalty of the band. And, you know, and obviously everybody goes through ups and downs and blah, 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 blah. And they had their fucking Rocky points. No shit. But the fact that they stuck to that he stuck with them, even though he could have made a shitload more money, I I think that's awesome, and I think that shows the solidarity of what music can what music can do. Freddie didn't make money, bro. Freddie made music. The <laughs> music made money, but he didn't. That wasn't his goal. His goal was to perform. Oh yeah, and yeah. Then, and you're you're right because when you go back, there. I mean, there are stories about Queen about. Yeah, absolutely. The guy had it. Yes, and he and they went to lunch. I it was either that one or another one. 
do another one bites the dust. It was one of those baselines. The under pressure, I think it was under pressure, or it might have been another one bites no, the dust. No, it's bites the dust. Okay, it is. So they were they were trying to figure out the song. Yeah. Right? And, they, doo, 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 and the guy's like, doo, 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 doo. Doom, 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 doom. I'm like, yeah. holy fuck, yeah. And they're like, we're hungry, let's go eat. They lost it. They lost the beat. And the guy, and one of the drum, I think the bass player, right? And then yeah. the drummer kind of is like, no, no, it was like this. And they worked it back and got the got that tagline. Another one bites the dust is nothing without that. Yeah. It has. Doo, 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 and that has nothing doo, to do with Freddie, right? Yeah. It was the band. Yeah. They were magic. They truly were magic. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's kind of magic. I mean, you look that's at how fucking good song influential too. they are. Who wants to live forever? Right. Well, that's... I want to break for... Yeah, but that's from Highlander, right? And it's funny, like, that's so apropos to his life. Exactly. That's why it's it's such a great song, Who Wants to Live Forever, and and then and, and then he's gone so early and for so long now, right? But it's also... Uh, um, there's so many songs and so many words that you look at his life and it's just, you're like, he touched so many people, man. I'm already willing you. You better stop that fucking shit, bitch. fucker. I will sing some Slayer shits, bro. There's no time for us. There's no place for us. Uh, it's There's no crying in the podcast. And then, <laughs> and, and then uh, towards, towards at the end when he, he won, he had this one song he had to do. Um, it, Brian May wrote it, and Brian. I mean, he was. He looked like I. He looked like death. He looked bad, right? He yeah. looked bad. He was right at the end, and Brian's like, "I don't know if you have the strength to sing this." And he looks at him. And he goes, "I got it, darling." Like, it's, <laughs> it's Freddie, right? Yeah, like, right. And the truth is, he leaves. Uh, honestly, he was. He would have been different. It wouldn't have been the same way. I, but I think he would have been big in whatever thing he approached. I just don't think it would have been that. It might have been more opera or maybe broad, like Broadway. Or, yeah. He was such a power, because he came from classical music and he came right. from opera and stuff. And you you hear so much of the opera in his, his you know. His delivery. Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Is just, it's operatic. Da, da, da. Yeah, yeah. It's just so beautiful. Yeah. It really is. And it, it was too early. Absolutely. I didn't, I could not agree more, dude. And I'm, I'm, I feel lucky that I, that I, it sounds really dumb, but I feel lucky that I got to hear those songs so many times, and I get to hear them tonight and tomorrow. And you know what I mean? That's it's that's what's fucking amazing about music. It's just, it's I, over and over again. You still I hear a song for the nine hundredth time, and I still get chills sometimes. Still moves. That's me. fucking rad. Yeah. That's what I love about when it. When I need to clean the house, I put on fucking nine inch nails and I fucking do yeah. it because it just dri it drives me, right? It awesome. drives you. And Queen, st arguably. I've been to a lot of concerts. I was not at Live Aid. I, I was not. Or Farm It was Live Aid. Right? Live Aid, yeah. I've been to a lot. I've been blessed to be at so many concerts. I was not that, but that was the best set of any musician. And they, everyone arguably claims that that Queen, that six song set that was like 30 minutes long, yeah. was the greatest single chunk of a con of concert of all time. Well, it sure looks like and it. When you watch it. Yeah. They fucking came in on fire, and they came back even more on fire. It was <laughs> right. like, I, if that was even possible, it was amazing. It was amazing because you, I've seen on recordings, but I would watch that time and time again. On, yeah, you know, however I could. I agree. Yeah, and awesome, but all great bandmates. They they made it have. They were a family. They were real and family, but chosen, right? So they, you know, you had your quar quarrels, whatever. But when they brought in David Bowie, how the heads clashed, like uh, Fred Mercury and Bowie clashed because they're both so type A. Eh? Yeah, you know they both wanted some wanted something out of under pressure. Oh yeah, you know, the the song they were creating together, yeah. and it's magic. It's fucking unbelievable what they were able to do. Yeah, anything else on that or anything anything else you have? I have nothing else. Bro. Tango nada. Tango nada. Well, that's been it. Uh, so basically, what? this has been. You've got nothing else. Well, I don't even know who you are. What? I'm I'm sorry. Are you what? I don't know. Man. I don't even know who you are anymore. We can do more. I mean, we no. could totally opine. Um, once again, any that you guys know or thought of was, did mama cast or did, did mama cast leave mom and the papas? I have no idea. Of it or, you know, other, give us other bands, did mama other people. leave the papas or did papas leave the mamas? Mamas and the papa. George Papadopoulos? I got nothing. That's sound, it's all Greek to me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Willie. <laughs> was it Willie or the other guy or whatever? Anyway. Yes. So this has been, once again, would you like to recap what Free this- Free Willie. 
Wee, wee, wee. This is uh, from the home office in uh, Columbus, Georgia. GB2, thank you, sir. Thank Pre- you. Appreciative. Thank you very much. Appreciative. We are grateful. This is uh, the uh, great front men and singers and artists and musicians that have left bands and the differences in their solo careers, as well as what would happen if with solo artists and careers, et cetera, yeah. on the beer Googles. I feel like to recap that. Yes, sir. I think Freddie Freddie and Queen would have been the only ones that would have been okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I think Queen would have hurt more just because Freddie's voice was so distinctive. But they, I think musically they were just really good. They were just, the four of them were really good. I think uh, Brian May could have joined another band and been fine. Oh, yeah. Same with the other two Roger guys. Roger and the y- other guy. Y- yeah, you know, the same with yeah. Supreme number four, the bass player, and the guy from the Eurythmics, the drummer. And Primus. And yeah, those guys could have joined other bands and been fine, I think, because they were obviously incredibly talented, both like creatively as well as players, you know, and they brought a lot to the table. Yeah, I think that's awesome, man. Uh, Thank you again, GB2. Yes. This was this was a fun one because like we got to kind of think and like talk about, well, we love music. So share with share what you want with us guys um once again we are on coffee ko hyphen fi yeah dot coffee. com buy mr woodsy an owl buy mr woodsy a coffee owl buy, buy him an owl and a coffee mug yeah and we i don't know if there's a coffee a mug. coffee and an owl mug an owl mug an owl and a coffee mug yeah i'll mention on the next one <laughs> again everyone thank guys, you for listening thank you so oh, the much camera's on me dipshit yeah but i'm still doing this if i can Mira. Over there. Look at. Hi. Yeah, I, I know. Rate, I know. download, subscribe, comment. Thank you so much for listening. Review. Also. And give us feedback on this. Tell us some bands that you thought were like. Right. Look, there are myriad obscure bands of whom I know nothing. Or yeah. I might have heard somebody and thought they were on their own or thought they always were solo artists or whatever. And you're like, oh, you know, they used to be part of. Blah, blah, blah. What if the main butthole left the butthole surfers? Yes. Right? Yes. But what about like Buster Poindexter was yes. part of Guys and Dolls or New York, sure. New York Dolls? I think the New York Dolls. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever it was. New York Dolls. Oh, shit. We did forget um, Billy Idol left Generation X. See? There's one. Boom. Yeah. You're welcome. We just reeled that one back in. Rate, <laughs> review, subscribe. Thanks so much for coming. It's been a great day. Be excellent oh. to each other. Party on, dudes. <laughs>